Explain to us how iRobot, what role it played last week. Hi, John. Good to be with you. Well, uh, last week, uh, as you uh, mentioned, we have a, a variety of uh, robots that we use with the military as well as first responders for uh, EOD uh, or explosive ordnance disposal missions uh, to identify uh, hazardous uh, packages and, and in some cases disarm them or render them safe. Uh, last Monday when we became aware of the events uh, in Boston, we contacted the local authorities, uh, let them know that we had uh, additional systems available for them. Uh, as you mentioned, our PackBot system, which is about a 60-pound robot. Uh, it is controlled by an operator control unit or a laptop and a game-style controller. It allows the, yeah. uh, the robot to go downrange and keep the, the operator at some safe distance from uh, any hazard, be it an uh, explosive device or chemical weapon or something like that. Uh, so that so was uh, made available. Yes. And, and just to confirm, so the PackBot is something, I, the Boston Police Department had at least a PackBot um, in their possession yeah. and you guys made more of your different iRobots available basically? That's correct. Uh, not so much the Boston Police Bar Department, but the Mass State Police has them as well as the federal authorities have PackBots. You know, we're talking about technology that has to work in pressure-filled situations. When you are testing this technology to make sure you're going to have a product that works in these very pressure-filled situations, what goes into that process? Well, it's, uh, it's an evolutionary process, and as I mentioned, uh, the U.S. military is, uh, is a large user of our systems and really have uh, developed a, a ruggedness and, and that design over supporting 4,500 systems delivered primarily to the U.S. military for use in Afghanistan and Iraq in exactly these kinds of missions, uh, uh, IED missions, uh, improvised explosive devices, and those sorts of things. So this is really an evolution over five to seven years of product technology that has gone into these systems. And, and, and for your company that, you know, in the case of Fukushima, you wanted to be there, uh, you know, during the Gulf oil spill, you wanted to be there. These are the kinds of situations where you can test your technology, I would imagine? That's uh, exactly right. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, we were, uh, we uh, donated robots to Fukushima to try to be helpful in the recovery efforts there. Again, to keep operators out of that hazardous environment and put the robots forward to interface with the environment. Uh, we, uh, we actually sent uh, robots to 9-11, uh, not so much from a search and rescue perspective, but to validate the structural integrity of structures before first responders went in. Yeah. Uh, and then in the Gulf spills, we, we have an underwater robot that we uh, provided to the Coast Guard and uh, NOAA uh, that ultimately were able to validate the underwater plumes in that situation.